Let's take a look at a related rates problem where we have a square inscribed inside of a circle. Okay, so the first thing they tell us here is that a square is inscribed inside of a circle. So let's start with a square here, and let's inscribe it inside of a circle. The next thing that we can see here is that the radius of the circle is going to be decreasing at a constant rate, and this constant rate is going to be at half a centimeter per second. Not only that, we are also told what the radius is. So the radius of the circle is going to be four times the square root of two or four root two centimeters. So writing this important information down, we know that R is going to be equal to four root two, just because they're telling us that that's gonna be the radius of this circle at this given point. And also we know the rate at which it is decreasing. So what do we call that rate? Well, we're gonna call that dr dt, okay, in relation to time and it's decreasing at a rate of half a centimeter per second, so that's gonna equal negative one half. So again, this radius is four root two centimeters, and this is going to be decreasing at a rate of negative one half, or decreasing at half a centimeter per second. So what's the question that they're actually asking us? They're asking, what is the rate of change, we're looking for a rate of change here, of the area of the shaded region found outside the square. Okay, so a shaded region we need to find that's gonna be outside the square, but inside the circle. So let's go ahead and identify that. The area outside the square, but inside the circle would be this space over here, plus this space over here, plus the space down here, and finally plus this area over here. To find out the area of the shaded part, we can go ahead and take the area of the circle and subtract the area of the square. So to represent the area of that shaded part, I'm gonna use a capital A. I'm gonna say that's going to be equal to, the area of the circle is going to be pi times the radius squared, also known as pi r squared. That's the formula for the area of a circle. Then we're gonna go ahead and subtract the area of a square. Now a square is just a rectangle, so the area is length times width. Now, since it's a square, both the length and the width are the same thing, so I'm gonna use the same variable here. So I'm gonna use a and a to represent the sides of the squares. So a times a would be a squared, so the area of this particular square would be represented by a squared. What we're gonna do next here is see if we can go ahead and relate this r and a variable so that we can make a substitution and just deal with one of these variables instead of both of them. Let's focus on the radius for just a moment. Now remember, the radius of the circle is from the center to the edge, but if you go all the way across, that would be representing the diameter, or two times the radius. That being said, we could call this diameter of the circle 2r as well. And at this point, notice that we have a right triangle here. Now Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where the two legs are a and b, and c is the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and use the values or the variables that we have in this particular problem, right? So we have a squared, which is literally here going to be our a that is squared. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We're gonna go ahead and square that a. That's a squared plus our b squared is going to be another a squared. That's our other leg here. So we have an a squared plus another a squared, and that's going to equal c squared, right? Now c in this case for this triangle, that's going to be two r. Let's go ahead and write two r and it's gonna be that whole thing squared. Simplifying this a squared, that's going to be just a normal a here raised to the second power, plus we have another a squared, so let's go ahead and just simplify that also to a squared. And finally, this two r that's squared, that's two r times two r, so two times two, that's going to be four. r times r is going to be r squared, so we can go right four r squared on the right side. On the left side, we have a squared plus a squared, so we can combine those like terms to write 2a squared, and that's going to equal 4r squared on the right side. Now, let's go ahead and just isolate this a squared. Now, let's go ahead and isolate that a squared, and we can do that by dividing both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 on the left side is just going to leave us with 1a squared, or just a squared. And on the right side, 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2, so we're going to have 2r squared on the right side. Okay, so why did we go ahead and do that? Well, if you take a look at this a squared over here, notice that that actually represents the area of the square. So we can go ahead and use 2r squared as an equivalent value to that a squared. So let's make a substitution, and you can see why this is beneficial in just a moment. But the area of that shaded region is going to equal pi r squared, so pi times this r to the second power, and then minus, and instead of writing a squared, let's swap that out for what we just solved for, and that's going to be two times r squared. 
Okay, so looking at our equation now, it's kind of nice we only have one variable, which is r. We don't have to deal with a. We rewrote it in terms of r. And looking at these two terms, it looks like they have a common factor, or their GCF here is going to be equal to r to the second power. So we can say the area here is equal to, and instead of writing what we currently have, let's go ahead and factor out the GCF here. The GCF is going to be r squared. So I'm going to factor out this r to the second power since they both have it in common. And if we factor out r squared, we're going to be left with pi minus 2. Okay, so this is going to be an equivalent expression to what we just had on the right side. Now keep in mind that this pi minus 2 is really just a constant or a coefficient for r squared. So we can just turn this around if it's a little bit more clear or easier to understand here, right? So again, pi is just about 3.14. So 3.14 minus 2 is really about 1.14. So let's write this as pi minus 2 as the coefficient for this r squared. So just think of it as a coefficient like a normal number that's in front of r squared. For this next step, it's now time to take the derivative of both sides. So let's find out the rate of change of the area in respect to time, which is measured in seconds. That's going to be dA dt. So that's going to be the left side here, and that's what we're solving for. Now on the right side, let's just go ahead and use that power rule. So if we use the power rule, let's go ahead and take that 2 and bring it in front. It's just going to go ahead and multiply by whatever coefficient is there. But to keep things clean here, let's keep it as pi minus 2. Remember, that's just equal to some number. And then we have r raised to the two minus one power, which is really just one, so we don't have to write that. However, the one thing we do need to add on the right side here is going to be times we have a dr dt, or the rate of change of the radius. Okay, now that we've gone and taken the derivative of both sides, let's see if we can find out what this dA dt is. But if we're gonna do that, we need to go ahead and make sure we have some other values. So two is not a problem, that's just a number. Uh, pi minus two, again, that's not a problem either. Those are just numbers. Now let's see, what is r equal to? Now r we know is equal to four root two. That's the given time we are trying to figure out the area. So making that substitution, let's go ahead and multiply this by four root two. That's the radius at this given point and time. And as for this dr dt, which is the rate of change of the radius, dr dt, remember we were given, was decreasing at half a centimeter per second. So let's go ahead and multiply this by a negative one half. Okay, so I think we're almost there. We have everything pretty much the way we want it. So we have this dA dt, or the rate of change of that area. And let's go ahead and clean up the right side a little bit. So we have two times negative a half, so those are reciprocals. Those cancel out to make one, so we just have negative one. So we have this negative, and let's go ahead and write this four root two first. So let's go ahead and write four root two in front. And let's just go ahead and multiply by this pi minus two with a quantity of pi minus two. So these are all numbers here. Now this is the rate of change for the area of the shaded region, and we keep it like this just because pi and root two go on forever and ever and ever, but it doesn't really tell us what the actual like value is in terms of understanding a decimal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this into a calculator in case that's helpful. So if you plug this entire thing into a calculator, then you're gonna get a decimal and it should be negative because the area is decreasing. And so you should get negative 6.46 roughly. And again, this is representing the area of the shaded region. So area would be measured in centimeters squared, and that's going to be per second. So that's the rate of change of the area of that shaded region. Therefore, we can conclude that the area of the shaded region is decreasing at a rate of this four root two times pi minus two, or the quantity of pi minus two centimeters squared per second, when the radius is exactly four root two for its length. So there you have one strategy for going ahead and tackling this related rates problem where you have this square inscribed inside of a circle. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.